on an average day, I'd say, like, I can change, like, five to seven people's minds, depending on how long it is and where the where we are. Hello everyone and welcome back to Humans of the Pro-Life Movement, a segment of the Pro-Life Guys podcast where we seek to highlight some of the unsung heroes in the pro-life movement. Many of you know this, there are countless people working in the political arm of the movement, the pastoral arm of the movement, and the educational arm of the pro-life movement, fighting tirelessly to defend and protect pre-born children. And what we want to do on this show is to learn more about their stories, some of the things that we're, that they are doing, and uh, and be inspired by the work that they are doing behind the scenes. Many of these people are not getting recognition at all. They're totally fine with that because they know the work that they are doing is good as they seek to give a voice for the voiceless and highlight the humanity of preborn children. Well, today I have a wonderful guest on. She's a good friend of mine, uh, a colleague we've worked together for the last several years. Her name is Vanessa Otten. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining me on Humans of the Pro-Life Movement. Thanks for having me, Peter. It is my pleasure. All right, so over the last few years, you've worked for CCBR, the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform. You've traveled the country. You've had countless conversations. You've equipped so many people to have effective conversations about abortion. You've inspired people to join the pro-life movement. Could you share with us a little bit about where your passion comes from to fight this great injustice in our nation? So I would say growing up, um, I first got exposed to abortion through a video um, when I was in high school. I saw it, I was horrified. I was like, Kate, we need to do something. Um, I would say like that started the passion, but that is probably not necessarily what keeps it going. Um, then when I took to the streets and started having conversations of my own, just realizing how much abortion is everywhere like people who i talk to so many majority of people probably have like had abortions or know someone very close to them who've had abortions so i'm kind of like okay well like i'm so passionate about this because it's not just like it's it's hurting preborn children it's literally killing them um but it's also there are so many hurting people from abortion that like we need to help them like this culture is broken and hurting and abortion is a huge reason um so yeah then i keep getting more and more passionate every conversation you're like hey i can talk to another person um and just seeing you can actually change minds on abortion if there was i think i'd probably be a lot less passionate about doing something if i was discouraged and being like hey you can't do something um but i'm way more passionate because it's like if i have conversations i can change people's minds and they will actually not abort their child like that's kind of cool um and there's hope there so then yeah you get more and more passionate because you're like you can do something um yeah. So yeah, I'd say that keeps me passionate, keeps me involved. That, that's great. Vanessa, you said something that I have heard interns say before. I've heard staff members say, I've heard uh, people say when they've joined the pro-life movement and decided to stay is that this is not something where, you know, we're just doing it out of the, you know, the goodness of our heart and because it needs to be done. Um, but you know, there's not really fruit that we see and we, we, you know, we don't really know people who change their minds. Um, but what you're saying is that what can, what helps you continue to go out on the streets, have those conversations is the fact that you can change people's minds. I mean, we use abortion victim photography. We use, uh, some very street tested and time tested apologetics that as, as staff, as interns, volunteers across the country, we see change people's minds all the time. Now let's, let's dive into that for a minute. You have a ton of stories, uh, a ton of conversation because of the, the, the many conversations that you've had. Could you share with us a story or two of perhaps someone who's, who's changed their mind, perhaps a, a baby whose life has, has, whose life has been saved, uh, or even just a, a really notable story or two that sticks out in your mind. So thinking through 
it's always hard when people ask me this question because it's like, hey, there actually is a lot of stories that are super fun that if I spent a second and really thought through, you could come up with a bunch of really cool stories. Um, one that I think is helpful um, and just like super like I just loved it um, was I was in Toronto here uh, last year and I came up, there was a guy at a bus station and I came up and I'm like, hey, like um, I had an image of an abortion, 10 week abortion. And I'm like, hey, like, what do you think about abortion? Invite him into the conversation. He's not interested. So he's like, um, like, oh, uh, I don't know. I don't really have thoughts. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give it one more shot, one more try, whatever. So I was like, hey, like, what do you think about the images that I'm holding? And he's like, oh, yeah, like, that is not good whatsoever. Like, ugh, yeah. And I was like, okay, like, is that what you think about abortion then? Um, So got him hooked into the conversation. He's like, well, no, not actually. Like, I think abortion should be a choice. Like, and so we started talking about that. We started talking about abortion, the ethics of it. Um, like, okay, so if we believe in human rights, we should get them, that kind of thing. And it was becoming more and more logical. He's like, yeah, I guess it makes sense, like, that we shouldn't um, have abortions. And then he's like, this is so weird that we're having this conversation. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and he's like, like, no, you don't understand. Like, me and my girlfriend were just talking about this yesterday. She thinks she's pregnant and we we talked about having an abortion. Um, and I was like, wow, like this is it. This, this is very current. Um, I was like, so like, what did you guys decide? Or like, what are, what are, what are your th thoughts right now? And he's like, well, like we were pretty set on abortion and we still like, like last I talked to her, we're set on abortion. But like this conversation is definitely weighing in something. And then he's like, but I'm so like, I'm so not ready for a kid. And we started talking through, um, it got way more personal. And basically I got to work through his life situation. We went, be, <laughs> he's like, I'm in school. Like I can't do it. And we went right down to the practical of like, Hey, like how long are you in school for? Um, and he's like, well, I have like five more months still. And I was like, Oh, like, so you'll be done in five months. And then what do you hope to do? Get a job after that. And like that. And we basically worked through a way that he was like, Hey, actually I can see a way through this. He's like, technically I guess in five months I can have a job and support a family and like maybe I can actually do this and like you could sh see the shift there with the conversation of like more and more hope being just like as it was practically worked out that he was like yeah I actually literally can do this and then realizing what abortion is doing like this is what I should be doing um so he left the conversation being like hey like I am definitely going to re-talk to my girlfriend and we have to re-decide what we're going to be doing so I found that like super fun. Um, just like, Hey, really practical people going to have abortions. Um, and just you take, it was probably like a 20 minute conversation, maybe half an hour. And you're like, and then change their mind and rechange like that'll change how he, um, how, like how he decides what they do kind of thing. So I found that really encouraging. And there's lots of stories like that. Like I have talked to people many times. Um, there's, okay. There's probably like a handful more times where people were in the direct situation where they were going to have an abortion, like, like they knew they were pregnant kind of thing. Um, but also so many times where, yeah, people, people are like, well, if I get pregnant right now, I'm going to have an abortion, um, that kind of thing. And so there's just tons of really fun conversations where they change their mind completely. That's great. And that reminds me of a quote, something that one of our friends, John Barrows has, has said, and I've, I've mentioned it on the program before. It's amazing what God will do if you simply show up. I mean, you showed up to have conversations and in those situations, people were in a position where they were thinking about getting an abortion, had one scheduled perhaps, and you were able to really speak into that situation, um, you know, challenge them, but also speak lovingly and, and highlight some of the options that are available for them uh, so that they don't have to do this injustice to their child. Now, I, I have a, a question. I didn't ask you this beforehand, so I hope I'm not throwing you a, a curveball here. Um, but for the audience, could you share with us uh, roughly how many conversations have you had and how many people, or, or just how many uh, people have changed your mind in the conversations that you've had? Okay, that is, Peter, that's me. And that's such a hard conversation, uh, such a hard question. Um, I would, <laughs> I would say, I'm such a terrible estimator. I have no idea, like hundreds at least, if not thousands, I have to think about this. Um, I've been doing pro-life work for five years. Um, on an average day, this is bad. On an average day, I'd say like I can change like five to seven people's minds, depending on how long it is and where the where we are. Um, I I love I, I love that because um 
you know, for some people they can think of, you know, one ch mind changed or, you know, they count them on two hands. Um, but you're not exaggerating here. Like this is something I could see by your reaction. You really don't know because there've been so many conversations that by God's grace have, uh, really ended up with people turning from abortion, um, in part or in full and, and choosing life for their child. I have one final question, Vanessa. Uh, there are a lot of people who are passionate about abortion, perhaps think, you know, I know I should do something, but never really get past the sort of, you know, talking about abortion after church on Sunday over coffee, uh, stage. Um, what sort of motivation would you give to them? Or why do you think that people should get more involved in being active in having conversations with the public, with the, you know, people on, you know, people at our neighborhood, people at the workplace, wherever it might be on the topic of abortion? Uh, because it's needed, like, and because it's possible. So I used to be the person who didn't do anything about abortion. So like, I'm very like, yeah, that's normal. And like, same with like a bunch of my family members, friends, like it's, it's normal not to. It's sad though. I don't think that should at all be our approach. Um, recently I'm like, I've been reading a lot of stories on the world war II and the Holocaust and things. And I'm like, okay, like why didn't people do something? Um, that's us today. Like we have our, the injustice of today. Um, and like, like you said, I've trained a lot of people. So like, I've seen people who have tons, like a variety of character traits, like some people who are super outgoing and loud and like whatever. And some people who are super soft and quiet or just like shy and people can change minds no matter who you are. And I'm like, we all should learn it, become equipped, and you practice. Like, we all start off a bit rough, and you get better and better until you, like, yeah, you're confident. And I think we all should be at that point because kids are dying around us, like, literally. We can pretend it's not happening, but it is. Um, so, yeah, I believe that every single one of us should be equipped. And there's, a, like, we can equip you. So that kind of thing, it's, like, it's there's a way there. So, yeah. Bam. Awesome. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, for those who want to learn more about the work that we do in Canada, you can check out our website and uh, our, the website from the Canadian Centre for Bi Bioethical Reform, the organization that we work for at endthekilling.ca, www.endthekilling.ca. There's a take action tab and you can get connected there. And I just want to reiterate what you said, Vanessa, and that is that preborn children are dying. And if we want to see this injustice ended, we have to do something about it. And we have to do some effective work uh, in reaching the culture and highlighting the humanity of preborn children and the inhumanity of abortion. Vanessa, thank you so much for taking the time and joining me on Humans of the Pro-Life Movement. My pleasure, Peter. That is Vanessa Otten, one of my colleagues here. Uh, she is taking part uh, in the internship that we are having in the GTA this summer. I'm really excited to be working with her. And uh, I'm so glad I, I finally managed to get her onto the, the Humans of the Pro-Life Movement. If you want to, to hear an episode, a Pro-Life Guys episode pod um, with Vanessa on it as our guest, uh, episode four, one of the very first episodes that we did, we had a conversation with Vanessa about some on the street conversations that she's had. It's an hour, so longer than this, we go more in depth about a number of different things. So go check it out, episode number four. And thank you for tuning in to Humans of the Pro-Life Movement. My name is Peter, I'm the host of the show. Uh, and with my co-host Cam, we have episodes come out every single week that highlight different facets of the abortion war. Uh, we, we want to get you informed about what's happening. We want to introduce you to heroes of ours who are working in the pro-life movement in you know various different ways and fighting against this injustice. But most importantly, we want to equip you to have effective and winsome conversations on abortion. How many of you have heard that there's no such, you know, you just can't have good conversations about issues like politics or religion uh, or even abortion? Well, we like to debunk that because that is not true as you've heard today with Vanessa. So go check it out. You can find the Pro-Life Guys podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your content, or you can watch this sort of content on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you again for tuning in. And we hope you tune in again next week. God bless you all.